Hi everybody, this is Gregor from Personas and today I have a bit of a shorter video for you but it's one that's very close to my heart. It's something I've been meaning to address for quite a while because as I'm reading comments and on social media I notice that time and time again Studio One users are confusing the concept of tracks in your song arrangement view and mixer channels in your console view. And that's understandable because in other DAWs they are one and the same thing but in Studio One we do this decisively different and why that's so beneficial to your workflow and in order to declutter your arrangement and make the mixer more dedicated to actual mixing that's what I want to show you today. To demonstrate what I'm talking about here for people who are not too familiar with the difference of tracks and channels, let's start with the easiest track of all, the audio track, because there you always have a one-to-one -one relationship between the tracks here in your song and the channels in the mixer. This means that all of these tracks that I now see in my song have a one-to-one -one representation in the mixer. So essentially I wouldn't even have to have the mixer open for anything. I could just do all of the mixing from the track inspector right here. Sort of like a poor man's mixer, if you will. That's all fair and good because the audio tracks might have events on them, you know, stuff like that, that's actually relevant to your song arrangement. So that makes total sense. The interesting part begins when we're talking about things like bus channels. In certain DAWs, if I would add a bus channel to sum all of these 16 audio tracks into one channel, you would also get a bus track inside of your song arrangement. To simulate this behavior, we actually have this preference for people who really wanted to keep it. I just want to encourage you to try it the other way, but let's look at this classic behavior first. To do that, you go to Studio One's preferences, advanced automation, and then automatically create automation tracks for channels. Hit apply and OK. And if I now add a bus for selected channels, you see I'm also getting a track for that here in my song arrangement. Some of you might say, well, great. I disagree because this bus channel has nothing to do with this song. There's no song relevant info displayed here on this bus channel. I can't put events on this or something like that. So this would be a totally meaningless track in the song view that just clutters up everything in my arrangement with no information. So what's the approach that Studio One goes with this? Well, to explore that, let's go back into Studio One's preferences. Once again, advanced automation and disable this behavior to automatically create automation tracks for channels. Now, as soon as I right click these and add a bus for selected channels, you'll notice that I'm only getting a bus channel here in the mixer, but I don't get a track for that in the arrangement. I like that. That's what I want because this bus channel is for mixing. When I want to mix, I open up the mixer console. This shouldn't clutter up my entire song view. The song view should really only consist of things that are relevant to my song arrangement. The bus channel is not relevant in any way, shape or form to my song arrangement. It becomes relevant as soon as I want to add an automation for that. But if I want to do that, I just right click, edit automation and now I get a automation lane for this bus. So why is this such a big deal you ask? Well, let's look at what this would look like as soon as you add a realistic amount of bus channels to your song. This is what the song arrangement looks like with Studio One's approach of decoupling tracks in your song view arrangement and mixer channels in your console. As you can see, the song arrangement only consists of things that are relevant to your composition and if you want to do mixing, that's when you open up the mixer console and do mixing. And here is the same song with the same arrangement, same length, same everything, but with the one track equals one channel philosophy. Especially if you don't have massive amounts of screen real estate to spare, I think this comparison is pretty striking. But bus channels and effect return channels aren't the only ones that are highly benefiting from Studio One's philosophy of decoupling the track and channel concept. You can really have as many tracks for your channels as you want. So you could have your drum fills from the same drum on a dedicated track if you'd like and still mix that from the same channel. Or one pattern for Impact XT so that I can compose all these different elements that this drum kit consists of within the same pattern. But I still want to have regardless six dedicated mixer channels to have dedicated control over the kick, snare, clap, hi-hats and so forth independently. 
Should I really have to have six tracks in my arrangement if I want to compose my drums in one pattern just to be able to have six dedicated mixer channels? Well, I don't think you should. And if you don't think so either, then give this Studio One setting a shot. Don't have the same track and channel count in your mixer and your song. It's just unnecessary duplicates that don't mean anything in the song arrangement or vice versa in the mixer console. Dare to decouple your workflows a little bit. Put your mixing hat on when you're mixing and put your production and beat making hat on when you're making songs. If you want to learn more about tracks and channels, we've done some dedicated videos diving much deeper into this concept. I just wanted to do a brief introduction why this would even be a desirable behavior because many people coming from other DAWs, as I said, are struggling with this concept at first in Studio One. I hope you come to appreciate it as much as I did and see you next time.